And we're back for another episode of Startup Hustle, a podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. If you want to start, own, or build a business, then you're in the right place. We bring you the real truth about what it's like to take something from concept to launch, from growth, innovation, experience, failing, or winning big, we've got you covered. So let's get down to business with another episode of Startup Hustle, brought to you by Fullscale.io. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on, man? Uh, just kind of doing my thing now before we get into what we're going to talk about today. And so I do my job. Today's episode of Startup Hustle is brought to you by Fullscale.io, helping you build software teams quickly and affordably. So Matt, I brought in some leadership today and I'm really fired up about the whole situation. What are you all fired up about? I'm just fired up about everything, man. I you know, woke up and I, j- I jumped out of bed and I said, woo, I'm ready woo! to go. There you go. Ready to go. And then I looked at today's guest. And I'm like, man, I'm clearly fired up because we have the podcast host from Fired Up KC, a community leader at the University of Missouri in Kansas City with us today is Zick Nganga of the Fired Up Podcast, and once again, community leader, Zick, welcome to Start a Puzzle. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm already fired up. Thank you for that awesome intro. I'm already pumped. Let's go. You can yell a woo if you want. I mean, it's <laughs> up to you. It's up to you. That's always permitted at any time. So now, as, as I mentioned, you're, you're a community leader. Uh, the University of Missouri at Kansas City is... Uh, you know, a school here in our hometown that does has a very active role in our entrepreneurship community. One of our uh, additional hosts here on uh, Startup Hustle, Andrew Morgans, has been a participant in the mentoring program for entrepreneurship there, and you're doing a lot of stuff there. So, uh, why don't you just go ahead and give us a background of of what you're doing at, with Fired Up KC and and who you are. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to say um, thank you guys for bringing me on. Thank you, Matt Watson. Thank you, uh, Matt DeCarcy, for bringing me on. It's an honor to be on this show. I've been watching, listening from the back end of things, and I'm finally here. So um, I'm going to say my mom made it. So basically, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, thank you guys for having me. Um, hum, hum, that's very humbling, man. I really do appreciate <laughs> that. I, I mean, look, I know you've been a supporter of the show, and that's really why I wanted to get you on here because you're doing great things in our community. And thank you. So and much. and I, I I didn't want to cut you off there, but I, I really do. Like it's it's humbling when people come on and and look. Don't call your mom and tell you you're made it because you've been on the start of hospital. You got you got a lot bigger things to do than than this. So anyway, back to the backstory. Yes, yeah. So um basically, so my name is uh, Zeke Wanganga, but I go by Zeke Nganga. I am originally from Nigeria. I came to UMKC uh, in 2016. Um, so I've been with civil engineering. Uh, figured out I had a little bit of OCD and too energetic, so I couldn't fit in that industry. So I had to uh, switch in 2018. But it was a big shift for me from civil engineering to business. Um, but uh, I took a semester off from UMKC because I had financial issues, just like every student has. I couldn't get any loans. So somehow, I don't know how it happened, but um, I'm a believer that, you know, if you if you believe in something, it will come through. Uh, I saved up the money that I was owing, and I came back to UMKC in fall semester 29. I think it was tw- 2018 fall semester. And when I came back, um, while I was, I was out for like eight months, I was reading books from thinking grow rich, uh, rich dad, poor dad, um, just trying to figure out who am I and what can I do? So when I came back, I was like, how can I bring more value to UMKC and the students? Cause I believe that, you know, we are all leaders as young people. So that was the idea that started me up, uh, in the fight up uh, podcast. So I started fight up as an organization just to, you know, meet and talk about purpose and leadership. And we started, uh, on the fourth semester of 2018, by the spring 2019, um, a friend of mine that was he was like my vice president for the organization invited me to come on a radio show on campus. I did not know we had a radio show on campus. I was like, okay, cool, let's go do it. So um, we got on it. It was pretty cool. And he said we should start our own radio show. I'm like, I had know nothing about radio, so why should I even do it? But I was like, you know what? It's it's a chance. I'm gonna take it. Let's do it. So uh, we literally went through training for um, for the radio show. I wasn't paying attention at all because I was like. You know what? I'm not interested in this. I'm just going to be the co-host and you do whatever you need to do. But, it's a lot like Watson. 
<laughs> <laughs> so fast forward, uh, the day was supposed to have the first interview. Um, so my co-host, which was supposed to be the main host, uh, plays basketball at UMKC. He had a basketball training that day and he couldn't make it. So it was left for me, the guy who didn't know how to run nothing to start the show. So I was outside freaking out. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't even need to start this. But um, I got Once again, message. sounds like Watson. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was standing outside, and then uh, a friend of mine gave me the best advice. I don't know if it was an advice or it was just checking me. Um, she asked me, because I was like, I'm not going to do this. And she asked me, what, are you gonna, what, what do you have to lose? Just go try it. If you fail, you fail. I'm like, you know what? I should just go try it. So I literally right. jumped into a radio show, um, texted a friend of mine who works in the radio station, and she came through and helped me put the things through. And all I had to do was just talk in the mic. And that first day I was nervous, but for some reason I had this, I just had this uh, flare in me. It was it was really good. Like I just had this, you know, being able to share my ideas was really awesome. So ever since that day, I became the host. Um, fast forward, because uh, on, on our campus at UMKC, the University of Missouri, Kansas City, shout out, Roo, 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 um, we... The other radio shows on campus talk about, you know, certain activities, things happen on campus. But I was like, how can I expand um, this uh, my show to bring in entrepreneurs, leaders from Kansas City? Because I believe that every leader, you know, has a story that would inspire people. So I started bringing leaders into my podcast. And fast forward to 20, uh, 2020, I got the mayor on my show. And that was like a, a huge, like, foundational thing for me. I got having the mayor on. And it's been upscale ever since on LinkedIn. I've been able to connect with awesome people in Kansas City. And I just, uh, my whole goal with Fired Up Casey is to, you know, inspire people to pursue their purpose and their passion and not just be so focused on getting a degree, but focus on bringing value where they are. So that has been my goal, bringing leaders like yourself, um, millionaires, and bringing them on my show to show that all the millionaires you see on TV are also human beings as well. They have stories that will impact your life, you know, just making it simple. So that's what I do with Fight Up Casey, and that's what I've continued to do uh, with my show. So that's a brief, long, a long brief uh, description. Well, you're doing a great job with that. I'm looking at some of the people that have been on on Fired Up Casey. Now, if you get a chance, uh, you can find a link in the show notes. Go uh, check out uh, Zeke's uh, podcast. He's had some familiar faces. You mentioned uh, Mayor Lucas. And you know, Quentin's been on Startup Hustle before. He's a he, Matt and I have known him for a while, and we're really excited about Quentin because we got to know him as a member of the startup community long before he was officially running for mayor. And mm -hmm. I think Matt and I might remember one night going out to dinner with him at nine or ten at night, and just we were asking the dumbest questions you could ever ask because we were just really curious about what it was like to get ready to run for mayor. Do you remember yeah. that, Matt? Yeah, he was on the city council, and he, you know, that was kind of the early days of the like primaries and stuff for, for mayor, I think. So yeah, it was kind of cool talking to him back then. He was just another guy, like you said earlier, millionaires, entrepreneurs, they're just people, right? They're no different than anybody else. And we were just hanging out with Mr. Quentin. He's just, yeah, we, were, we, were, we were asking him questions and I was like, Quentin, I see you at entrepreneur events all the time. What's the draw? And he said, man, you know what? Like most of the time as a councilman, I go to meetings, I go to do stuff. I, I step away from the mic and I get cornered by someone yelling at me about potholes or something yeah. like this. But when I, go to, when I go to startup and entrepreneur events, everyone has this forward thinking attitude and they're like thinking about what they're going to do, the problems they're going to solve. They're focused on solutions and aware of the problems. And he goes, it's just really refreshing. And I'll never forget that because it was shortly after that he was preparing to run for mayor. And I think at the time we asked him how many people were going to be on the ballot. And I think he said 12. Yeah. Oh yeah. In the beginning. And we're like, wow. You know, we talked to him for a little bit and, you know, ask a bunch of, which were probably really like rookie questions. Um, another, another name that stands out is Isaac Collins. So Isaac yeah. was our co-host on the night we did the live show. And uh, had, I don't know, we had about 100 people there. If you ask us, it was like 190,000, but it was really mm -hmm. only like 100. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and, and some other folks, and I know you're friends with Aaron Folk and Ezzy Redwood, Bo Nelson, um, Roy Scott, especially. I mean, yes. we're obviously huge. Roy's, Roy's one of our new co-hosts, and yeah, we'll have some okay. episodes coming up. And while we're there, you know, if you're listening, make sure you check out some of the new episodes that are coming out. Uh, Lauren Conway's 
uh, first episodes will be out by the time this is published. And Andrew's been, uh, Andrew Morgan's has been doing some great, great stuff about e-commerce. So Zeke, back to your stuff. And, and, you know, the, and I really want to say that what you're doing, I want to commend it because you're, you're younger and it's sometimes hard at, at a younger age to want to take a leadership position. And I think a lot, I think the important part is like actually doing it kind of like, uh, you got the advice before the radio show, you know, Matt and I didn't know a darn thing about podcasting until we sat down and started podcasting. So no one has experience doing anything until they do. And I, I, I now one of the things is uh, that I've noticed as a focal point of your message is uh, creating purpose for young people. Can you give us a, a little more? Can you expand on that? Yes. Um, yes, because like I said, I grew up my whole life in Nigeria and um, I never had, uh, you know, successful people talking to me in my schools or coming down to say, yo, this is how to get it done. This is how I, I figured out how I did this. You know, um, reading books like Think and Grow Rich blew my mind. I, I was like, what? If that guy can do that, that means I can do it too. So that has been my motivation of saying if that normal guy Something on something he was passionate about. He can do that. That means I as well can do that. And that's something I've been trying to, um, you know, trans, uh, transmit into younger people because I believe that the future is us. Like the young people, we are the future. But if we follow the same trend lines and just get a degree, on uh, going to work at a job and not actually building something that will create a foundation for the future, I like, literally miss it all. So for me, it has been what I've heard, what I've listened to, seeing leaders who literally started from nothing. Um, to get into where they are because they had a vision. Um, because I think for me, the most important thing for me is to just have that vision, you know, having a vision and then get into work to do it. And I believe that every human being has a vision, but they are scared. You know, they're scared of stepping that, doing that one step is always scary because you do not know, just like you said, the podcast, you don't know how the podcast works. You're like, if 25 trailer doesn't work, you see, I, I'm a failure. And I think uh, at a young age, me and being in my twenties, that is the most, the, the hardest thing for young people is that self-talk. You know, what will people think about me? What if I feel, what would they say about me? And the truth is, you know, I think I, I was on the a live show with Aaron Falk, um, I think it was yesterday. And there's something they said, they said that people don't really care that much about you. You know, they don't really care. You think they think to know, no one thinks that much about you, but it's just the self-talk of young people saying that, yo, I'm not able to do this huge thing. And they have all of this uh, vision of this huge idea they want to do, but to start it, they have to start small. So my thing is just showing them that, um, you know, the people you see on TV uh, started somewhere, you know, where you are, you got to start where you are and start now. And that's why quiet up our motor is it starts with you because literally it has to start with you. You can't start with someone else helping you out. You have to start and believe, say, I can do it and I'm going to start doing it. So that is why it says it's fired up because young people are fired. I'm fired up. I'm energetic. So that fire is where it starts. You saying I'm passionate for one thing and I'm going to go all in. You know, it might fail, but I'm going to say, anyway, I did it. You know, I pushed forward. It didn't work, but I learned. But you're not a failure. So it's just, that has just been my mindset, you know, being able to impact that fire in young people. It's like, yo, let's get it. Like, you have more life to live. And, you know, what is it going to be for at the end of the day? Um, I'm going to end with this. Uh, Kevin Hatt did this, uh, I think he was in the Joe, Joe Rogan podcast. Um, and he said that every human being is a book, right? He said that. What is your book going to be like when you're said and done? When to open your book, is it going to be a fun book or a boring book? So it's whatever you want to write down is what you want to do. And I believe that every young person has that um, advantage or that opportunity to write something cool. And I just, that's what I want to do. I want to write something cool for, you know, the future to read. It's like, man, this dude did it all. So that's just the vision of what I'm doing. So do you, do you feel like the youth today are just as motivated, self-responsible, you know, and fired up to do all these kinds of things? Or I feel like there's a little bit of a shift and maybe it's just some of some of the youth today that kind of feels like the government's got to solve all our problems, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I feel like there's, there's a little bit of a gap and we have some people that feel like the government or somebody has got to solve all our problems instead of instead of being self-responsible right instead of like mm -hmm. i can protect myself from coronavirus we have all these people that are like the government somehow has to protect me from it you know and, and i feel like to be an entrepreneur and to be successful and all that stuff you got to be self-responsible right you got to go solve problems you got to go do things 
you can't just sit around and wait for like some other big, you know, mothership to protect you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would add on that to say that, uh, you know, 2020 is so different from 1999, right? It's like, there's so many social media influencers that make it look so easy, make life look easy. Like they woke up one day and they became millionaires and a lot of young people are thinking that's the way it works. You know, um, one day I'm going to put up a video out there and it works for some people, but some people might not work for them. So I think that is something that has been, you know, we have so, so much access to information that we don't even know what to digest. So I think that has been an issue of starting it first. Um, as a young person, it's always, I'm seeing, uh, you know, Logan Paul or the our, our mentors, all those, you know, social media tycoons that we have now. So I think um, for me personally, it's like you said, self-responsibility. You have to accept where you are and start working to where you want to get to. Um, but the 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 pressure on young people is so much. It's so much. The com the, the 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 competition in out there is so much. You can see it. Before now, let's say in two thousand, you, you couldn't see someone having a Lamborghini at sixteen because that would be they will be their own city. But now we can see that on social media, and that kind of makes us feel like you know what? I don't feel enough to do this. I'm just gonna chill. But it, but, but is that part of the you know, the problem with the American dream these days and in, in, in that people are motivated and see all the stuff that the shit that doesn't even matter. Like having a Lamborghini means absolutely nothing. It's like a use useless thing, right? What we really need is a fucking minivan to move our kids around. Mm -hmm. But the American dream is fixated on the Lamborghini, which nobody literally needs, right? It doesn't, you can't even put all your kids in there to take them to school. Like it's useless. And, and I've always said like the American dream is to buy all the shit you don't need and have as much debt as possible, right? Like that's the American dream in a lot of ways, but really it should be more about being able to live a successful life, have your own business, be an entrepreneur, all that sort of stuff. And I feel like that part of the American dream has gotten lost, right? Now the American dream, like you said, is like, oh, I'm watching this YouTube star who drives Lamborghini and all of a sudden I think that's what I need to do. But that's not, to me, that's not really the American dream. I have a comment actually, Matt, about this as well and something, and I think it's important is you mentioned so much about your comments about our people waiting for someone else to come in and be the savior and stuff like that. It reminds me when I was younger, I had an older mentor sit me down he's and basically he's like, I need to teach you something about responsibility and responsibility means taking responsibility for yourself, for your own actions, for your own output. And he used an example of one person that had come to work and they had gotten a speeding ticket and they showed up and they're like, I can't believe that that cop had gave me, how dare he give me a ticket for going 20 miles an hour over the speed limit in a school zone. And, you know, and his whole example was like, it wasn't that. And I know that, that the police are, and their responsibility is a hot topic right now, but this is a figurative example here. And, and it wasn't, the, it wasn't, it was the person's fault who had been speeding, not the other way around. So like, much like you said, it's, it's, we had, I think there's, there's been a big shift and it, this problem has existed for a long time, but who's responsible for me and my outcome and my results? It's me. It's I can't yeah. if and the more you start blaming any organizations, people, situations. Now, look, there are things that get thrown in our path that make successful outcomes more challenging it, it, than others. But in the end, we do decide whether we want to sink or swim on some level. Now, I, I think that that's a big problem. And then you mentioned like the things like the, the image, like the Lamborghini at, at a 16 year old. The, the interesting thing is uh, so much of that can be created with essentially with smoke and mirrors. Like, I mean, there's been a lot of situations like, oh, well, they leased that Lambo for a day, you know, and it wasn't really like this kid yeah. driving it. But like you mentioned, Zick, is in a, and going in, and I'm looking forward to your comments here because I think that we have created a culture of expectation where a 16 year old kid thinks I've literally talked to people in that age. And like, what do you want to do when you're older? Oh, I'm going to be an Instagram model. <laughs> okay. Well, you telling me that you want to be an Instagram model is like me telling you that I am a soldier on call of duty. 
<laughs> right? It's like not a very tangible thing and it's not really realistic, but I hear a lot of, a lot of people say that or saying that about their kids and just different stuff. So, I mean, do you think it's about a lack of responsibility? Like we're waiting for things to come to us or we blame failure on everyone else. And maybe that's just immaturity. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, just go into what uh, Matt, Matt said, Matt Watson said, um, about the Lamborghini, um, I would uh, call up uh, Ty, Lo- Ty Lopez, um, who has all this YouTube ads about, you know, how make this and do this, do this, you get all this Lamborghini. And a lot of people are soaking that in and thinking, you know what, I can actually get that immediately. And I think that is has always been the narrative, you know, when it comes to movies, the American movies, it's like this dude, you know, one day he was broken in, in a country place. And then the next minute, next day, he's in, in New York City making it large, you know. And I think that has been the um, the narrative for a long time. People have been zoned into that kind of movie mindset. Like, I can be broke for one day, and then the next day I can make money just easy. But then um, the in-between of it, no one really talks about it. And I know you guys will agree with me on this. Um, the top 3%, like 3%, like you guys said, take personal responsibility. They know the in-between. From 1 to 10 takes a lot of time. But the people who watch it on the outside say, it was easy. It took you a year to get that. I can get it too. And I think um it's just getting down to the basis of what people are consuming i think that's what the issue is what you consume is what you become you know people are consuming all this media that's telling them that you know you can be an instagram model and then boom you make money or you can do this and boom you make money so it's where are you at um what is your environment who are you hanging around with on my linkedin uh, profile i said i only hang around otp people only quality people people who have uh, a positive mindset people who are going somewhere because the people you hang around, what you consume becomes who you are. Now, um, going down to, you know, social media models, uh, social media comedians, you know, uh, King Batch and all of them, those dudes, it took them at least 10 years to get to where they are. But we see them today and we're like, man, that's, dang, that's, that's easy. But it's not, you know, it's also that in between of how they got there. Um, now, talking about people, because there are two ways to this. Um, the people who you know, are waiting for something to come help them. There are people who have been trying to get to somewhere, but it's something hindering them. Because there is a lot that goes into, you know, first of all, your environment matters. Where you where you are in matters a lot because where you are in is what you become. Um, I grew up in Nigeria. Um, the town that I grew up in, they didn't have as much opportunities as I have going to school in the in Kansas City. So where you are in the you know, the, the, the governing power that is in that environment literally has a lot to play in you getting to where you want to get to. Because if you're a smart person, but you don't get opportunity to step up to where you need to get to, it pushes you down. It pushes your morale down. But if I put out something that is positive and someone else says, you know, that was a good thing. And now I have one person who believes in me. That makes me believe in myself. But if you put one thing out and people just down on you, you kind of feel attacked. So I think people need to retake responsibility and believe in what they want to pursue, as well as there's the other side of people who are trying to get to that place and are being pulled back because of where they are, you know, and things things that are pulling them back. So it's it can go both ways. You know, there are people who are trying to get out, you know, the people who are just sitting there because you know what, I've tried and it's not working, you know. But then it's how do we how do we balance it out? You know, how do we balance it out? Because uh there are people who are trying out there, but still they're not getting the same results. And it's like how, how, how hard can I try to get to where I am, you know? So I think there is there is a deeper conversation in that, you know, in that alone, where um, it's where you are, who you are with, and what is the governing power around you? Well, and I, I think you're absolutely right. One of my favorite sayings ever is, you know, you're the average of like your five best friends, right? Mm-hmm. Like the people you hang around with, the, the type of media you consume, all of that greatly changes uh, you know, your thought process, your goals, your motivations. I mean, it's easy to sit around with, with five of your buddies and just bitch about the world all day long, every day. And that's the only thing you ever do. Like your goal and accomplishment in life is just to bitch about everything. Right. And it's another thing just to be around other people that are trying to solve problems, trying to build a business, you know, thinking positively, right. Versus hanging out with your friends are just very negative and just see the world in this terrible light all the time. Right. And you're right. Like people need, you know, inspiration, motivation, they need, they want to, and they want to hang out with people that are like them. And the key is, is getting people to hang around people that push them 
you know, to want to do more in life and get fired up, right? Like, how do we get yeah. people to get inspired? And so, you know, and I think that's what you're trying to do. And that's, that's what we need more of. We need more people to get inspired. And I don't know about you, but anybody who in my life who is like super negative, I don't want anything to do with them, including family mm-hmm. members. I don't want mm-hmm. to do with these people. I don't want to go hang out with them and listen to them bitch about all the things in the world. Don't care. Don't yeah. have time for that, right? I'm trying to move forward and do positive things in my life and the world. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that are in that spiral. They just sit around and they just bitch about everything in life and the world. But well, they're not and, doing you know, anything. Matt, I agree with you. That's actually I got a whole section in, in Balance Me in my book, Balance Me, about that. And that's a very difficult thing for people, especially when you're in that. Okay, so you have the people that you grew up around. And we often, and then often family, we have a tendency to feel like we have a responsibility to be cool with those people just because we grew up around them. And now some, now look, I'm not saying that the people you grow up with are problematic all the time, but everybody has that negative naysayer person. And, you know, actually, Zick, you can't, you really just sent up a signal flare for me because, you know, they're an extent, you know, so those people that doubt you, they tell you can't do it. They don't have big aspirations, anything. I mean, I, well, first off, I'd rather hang out by myself. I'd rather just be alone than hang out with people like that. Kind of like Watson said, but I think one of the things that's a, that's a big thing to consider is there's so much messaging and noise and information out there from social media to TV and everything else. And like, And, and, you know, that consumption factor, like if you're just going to read doomsday, depressing, (laughs) uh, not uplifting stuff, then you shouldn't be surprised if your outlook on your future and everything around you is also negative. It's like that negativity is just like a virus. If you put someone in closed quarters in a room with a bunch of negative people, that person will come out of that room saying negative shit. It's like not even that doesn't even require high levels of science to prove that. And if you put someone in a room and that's why I like what you're doing, Zick, because like put let's get fired up. Let's put some good vibes out <laughs> there now. Now, at the same time, it's important to maintain a sense of, of realistic outcome. Like I often say, sometimes you have to jump and then build wings. Like I don't want any of you to truly go jump off a cliff, Right. Because me yeah. telling Watson that he can actually fly and will grow wings can be a little irresponsible as well. But, you know, like, and, and, you know, the probably one of the most common questions I've had people ask me over the last 10 years is on a personal, like, hey, man, how do I make more money? I'm like, you need to quit focusing on money and focus at getting good at something. Mm-hmm. become a master of something and things like money are a byproduct. But with that, you can't instantly ad- obtain experience or mastery. What do they say, Matt? Five and 10,000 hours. Like which yeah. one's which is five, it's 5,000 hours, like basic master and like guru is almost 10,000. Well, and that's, that's the problem though with so many people is like, I've got a, a member on my team and he's like, I want to be a software developer. I'm like, how much time do you spend studying and practicing this? None. All right. Well, you spend it all, all a, night. Then you don't want to be a developer. Okay. Well, you keep playing Fortnite every evening and all weekend. All right. That's cool. You just keep doing that. You know, people, you got to put in the effort. You got to put in the work. You got to study. And, and Zick, like you said earlier, people have access to more information than ever before, mm-hmm. like online education, online training, you know, Wikipedia, like there's a million things you can learn about anything, but what do people do? They watch YouTube and Netflix play for it. Dude, I've been, I've been to five colleges and I've quit them all. Right. <laughs> and I've actually pretty much taught every, anything and everything I know about entrepreneurship, startups, anything I've learned from Google, YouTube, or just being around. And here you go, Watson, you might want to record. I, yes. And you may want to record this Watson. Cause I'm going to say something nice about you. Oh yeah. Uh Oh no. But also like being around people like Matt, or the mm-hmm. other people I know that I consider peers. And you know that, you know, Matt and I have been friends for a while. And and so let's just be, I'm going to be realistic here. So Matt sells a company for a massive amount of money and puts a puts an ask me bullseye 
on his back when that's public. Like, ask me for this, ask mm-hmm. me for that. Creates weird sets of, 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 you know, people coming out of the woodwork for stuff. And, and you know, one of the things I know for a fact was when Matt and I became friends, he was just happy to like talk to someone that wasn't asking him for something like mm-hmm. being selfish. And we were just like on a peer level. We we're like, it was nice to be around some people that wanted to do big things. We spent more time around each other. And at least by my estimate, we're, we've done a lot of big things together. And, you know, from full scale to the podcast, to investing a million dollars in local businesses to, and I feel like we're just getting started. So exam, and, and you know, like Matt said, ejecting the negative people, like get them out, get out, get out. You got to be just as fired up about getting rid of the people that are holding you down as you are about trying to rise up. So sorry, yeah. that was a little, soap, little soapbox <laughs> moment from all of us, but listen You're to the fired passion. Up. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Let's go. I'm like, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, honestly, um, I'll say this. This you guys this, this is just a thing. Every room I go into, it's the same mindset because you know, like I said, top three percent, only thing goes solutions, no problems, right? So it's like there are problems in the world, but the, the question is not there are there problems. The question is, how are we going to solve them? Um, I think, uh, I, I, dang, I forgot his name, but uh, um, he said he's, he defines success as the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Um, and it's basically you defining what you want and going to get it. If you said that you're going to be a business person at a young age and you went and did it, you are a success. Um, I read a book by, I think it was Jim Rohn, 12 Pillars. And basically that book, change the outlook of how I see things. He says, give more than you are paid for. Give more value than you're paid for. But people want to be paid more than to give value. And that is reverse. And that never works. Um, another book that I read was uh, The Go-Giver, which is basically you give value and then value, value you give brings more to you. So I think it's all about you know you saying, what? how can I help? How can I bring more value to my community? Like how... How, how is my life bringing value to people around me? And I think that's what people miss because everyone, like you said, trying to make money, trying to, you know, because um, I want to make money too. But at the same time, you have to become an expert in what you do. And it starts with your mindset. I believe so. It starts with you being able to envision yourself. And I'll, I'll tell this story when I say mindset, because I tell this story all the time. And it's something that really amazed me how it happened. Um, as a kid, I think I was like probably nine years old. Um, back in Nigeria, um, I had no way of coming to the United States at that, at that age. But I just had this vision and plan in my head of me coming to the U.S. because I watched a movie of two Nigerian actors that came to the United States. And I kept playing myself as the actor in that movie and see myself walking around and doing stuff. And 10 years after, I'm here. And it's like, dang, okay, that worked. Now, what else can I do with my imagination? And that's how things start happening. You know, um, a book that I read that really that really inspired me so much is um, the part of your subconscious mind, and basically, it 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 transformed the way I see things. Because I think you know, I always say this, and I don't want to get too uh, uh, deep, but it's like religion is good, but it's all the, the energy you get from it, right? The the mindset that you get from it, you know, what energy are you surrounding yourself with? Because what you eat is what you bring out, right? So it's like. I think it's basic math, but if people don't understand it, it's it flies by their head, and they think it's it's some big, you know, physics something, but it's really not. It's like you defining who you are and bringing more value to where you are. Because if you bring more value, people come look for you, you know, regardless of where you are. Well, I got a question for you. But, uh, first, I want to remind everybody that this episode is brought to you by Full Scale, and we can help you build software development teams quickly and affordably. And uh, it's a business that Matt and I own together, and it's been a huge success uh, for my company, Snackify. Thank you for providing value. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Zeke, my question for you though: have, have you done anything in the software world? I mean, is, is your goal to be, you know, what kind of entrepreneur do you want to be in the future? Maybe Full Scale can help you. I don't know, but the, uh, you know, what what is your kind of goal long term? What do you want to do? Yeah, so my long term goal um, with what I want to do is become an expert in mentorship and leadership. And uh, being able to break down the uh, the ideas of success into basic principles for young people to understand it, because I think I believe that if if I when I was ten, if someone were to explain to me what success is all about and how to start, I would have been way further than I am. So I think it starts with the mindset. So my goal is education, educating people. You know, being able to give the right education, not 
um, paper education that really puts you in the system the same way because a lot of students are just going into the workforce to become the same thing that their parents were. Mm-hmm. So I want to be able to switch that education to becoming not just getting a degree, but becoming valuable who you are, like finding who you are. So my goal is education, basically, trying to be able to simplify education in a way that people don't just go to school and get a dumb degree and start looking for a job. I want people to come out becoming what they want to be. So that's like my long-term goal and being able to create a fight up or um, any other organization that I found out to be a foundation where people come and have like seminars or you know mentorship programs and being able to discover who they really are and their passion and being able to go out, out in the workforce and hit it hard, you know, get people motivated and get, get things done. I like it. Hey, Matt, uh, since, you know, I, by the way, Zeke, I commend you on your vision for becoming a leader. And that's, that's another thing that when I look at the, my own timeline, so I was probably in my mid twenties when I, I really noticed and figured out that the people around me that were getting the things that I wanted were really embracing leadership. And prior to that, I had spent most of my time studying sales and marketing and really like, cause that's what I was doing at the time. And I realized that I, that I felt that I could ha- provide more value for those around me by focusing on leadership. Uh, a little bit into that journey, I, I really, and you know, I don't know where, where, where the root of this was. I don't know if it was like a Buddhist thing or whatever, but it was hearing that, you know, you get what you want by helping other people get what they want. Yeah. And, and that's tough on some days. That's tough on some days, but, and, and now here's the thing that that you have to have a level of purity with, you have to really mean it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. it's like, have you know, okay. If, if people that were giving donations to things really had pure intentions, all donors would be anonymous, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They really would. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. so that, you know, and I know this next statement I'm going to make is actually a Buddhist thing. It's like, giving without the intention of, ex- uh, without an expectation of return is the ultimate form of giving and leadership. And I chal- I want to challenge everyone to, to try that because like there's times that you have business and business is different. Business is different. You can still help people get what they want. You can still do a number of different things there, but try finding someone in your life and giving and and really try to have your mindset be around no expectation of return. Not like, hey, if I help Watson do this today, then he owes me a favor. That's yeah. not the right approach. And I mean, I, I, Matt, do you have any comments on that? Because I think you have a similar feeling when it comes to helping others get what they want. You know, there's a whole meme somewhere, little graphic where where there's a breakdown of people who like, you know, always give and then the other side, it's like they always take and like there's a whole list of and it's like a personality thing. You have some people that are like in one personality bucket or the other and the people that are in that other bucket are not very successful in life. They just complain about everything. Uh, well, they're they're, wait, they're waiting for they're waiting for you to come fill up their bucket. Yeah, <laughs> everything and is that's everybody not, else. I, it's that always, is not the way that it works. It's always I, everybody I, else's yeah. problem. It's yeah. always what's in it for them. Yep. You know, it's like all those things, right? And those people are just never going to be successful in life. Let's face it. Uh, it's the other side of the bucket that that, and hopefully it's not three percent. You said three percent a few times. Hopefully it's a lot more than three percent. But those are the people, <laughs> you know, that we got to get fired up and motivated to do more in life. You know. Yeah, I mean, cause I, I, Matt, I think have you, that. Matt, Go ahead, Zeke. Go ahead. Yeah, I said, Um, I mean, there is, the, I, I believe there are 3% of people who are actually successful. I know there is probably 90, 90% of people want to be successful, but they don't get to work with it, you know? So that's just- I don't, I don't think that. 90% of people want to be successful. I think, <laughs> they, I think they say that. Okay. Yeah. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that people don't want to like have more in life, but like there's- like, like you mentioned, like Matt, you said that someone wants to do this and you say, well, how much time are you spending doing this? Right. So, and, and I'm not trying to continue to quote balance me on this, but I actually lay out a, like a, a living, breathing mathematical example. You have high value activities and you have low value activities. Matt, you mentioned Fortnite. If that person is playing four hours of Fortnite every night, you're not moving towards your goals. So that is a low value activity. If that's if you can take even a small portion of low value activity and turn it into something that even just gives you any level of progress towards a goal, do that every single day. 
30 minutes a day, man, that's a hundred over 180 hours a year. Like, what do you need for a pilot's license? Like 90, you know, and you, you know, you can learn a foreign, uh, learn a, a elementary grasp on a foreign language in that amount of time. And the whole thing is, is you, you have the time. You have the time to move yourself towards your goals, to be a leader towards your goals. We just choose not to. And that's why I say so many people don't want to be successful because it requires effort. Now, look, here's the thing. If you can start just changing those little blocks of time and moving them forward, you're just going to retrain your own your habits. Your habits are to sit down, watch Netflix, play Fortnite, fuck around, get drunk, be hung over, all these different things. And all those really just kind of keep you in that same place. So, I mean, I don't know anybody that's been successful overnight. I know people that, well, we had Kylie, remember when we had Kylie Nichols from Nickel and Suede on Matt? And she yeah. said, so I'm an overnight sensation. I, I became an overnight blog sensation that had been blogging for 10 years. And she's just <laughs> like, just laughing because, you know, success demands payment in advance. And I have yet to prove that wrong. Like you, the, the Hollywood lets you believe, oh, look, this person, they just, they started this and boom, overnight had it. No, they didn't. If you get in and look at it, that probably, that person probably failed at like eight other things on the way to finding one that worked or they worked diligently or they really focused on it. One thing is they didn't, they didn't spend hours and hours a day doing things that were unrelated to whatever goal they wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. So sorry, another soapbox moment there. I'm really adamant about that because I hear like, Matt, are you, I'm tired of hearing people say, I want this. I need this. This is what I want to do. And then they're just like, cool. So what are you going to do for me to make my shit happen? Yeah, and my, um, answer, mm -hmm. my answer is nothing. It's hard. I mean, human nature, we're all so procrastinous and we, we always take the easiest path, right? That's as humans, it's like the easy path is almost always the path we take. But if you really want to be successful and move forward in life and do anything, you got to take the hard path. And yep. um, and you got to keep doing it. You don't just get to do it for three days and you're like, boom, I'm the best. Yeah. Even the yeah. most talented people, like, I mean, I've literally tested this with people that are rock stars. I'm like, are you just completely gifted? And they're usually like, I mean, I, I might have a gift, but I have spent tens of thousands of hours perfecting it. They're not like, hey, yeah. I just walked them on stage and the people are like, you know, like after three hours of playing. Now, at, having worked in the music industry, the number one reason that people quit learning how to play an instrument is because they're not good right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think about that that's the number one reason that people quit learning how to play a musical instrument it's because like after four days they're not josh groban on the piano yeah or, mm -hmm. you know like whoever you're like come on like i mean it's it's the same thing it's i mean it's kind of like how i've become one of the the most amazing singers of our generation matt it's because <laughs> i've been practicing <laughs> really hard every time we play mixtape, which I'm not letting Zeke get out of here. And, and Matt, because, all right, you see all these mixtape cards. So Matt has formed a conspiracy theory that I look at the card. That's me mixing and shuffling the deck. I got to make sure it's not a dance card because that won't go very, very well. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read a scenario off the mixtape card. And then once again, mixtapethegame.com. You can download it on iOS or Android. What song reminds you most of your father? Oh. My, for me, it's always that. That's easy. The Notre Dame University fight song. You know. Ooh. <laughs> Can I just say all 70s music? Because that reminds me of my oh father. Oh, my God. Congratulations, <laughs> Matt. You have a new worst answer ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that's a, that's you a guys better question. not let me win with the Notre Dame fight song here. It's a, it's a hall question. Okay. I'm going to go with Queen Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. Can you sing mm. it? A little part mm. of it? Just because? No. Especially the... Thunderbolts of lightning, very, very frightening. Galileo. Yes. I'm trying to buy Zeke some time because he looks puzzled. Skeleton. <laughs> Zeke, do you, ha do you have an answer? We're going to put you I, on I, the clock. I can't really think of any song because I don't even, songs, I don't, 
I'm trying to think. The only song that I would probably say that reminds me of my dad is the um, if you've ever watched, I don't know if you ever watched a soccer game and the 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 soccer game that goes me low. I don't know. It's just like a I'm trying to remember. It's like a like a hype song for the for like the, the, the a chant. If you don't if if you don't know the name, you have to perform it if you're going to submit it. So you're more <laughs> than welcome to. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to think about. Well, Dang it. And 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 you said you grew up in Nigeria. You don't have to answer just popular American pop songs. Okay. I have a feeling you could win with almost any answer today. You know what? Way. You know what? Um, I would say there is a there was a uh an old singer like it was like a one of like the probably like the mighty singer that he played. Um, I think it was his name is Sonny Ade. And he has this, you know, old version vibe. You probably might not know him so because he's a Nigerian artist back in the days. But I think that would probably be one um, that would remind me of him, which I do not play and I don't play, but that's the only song that I can remember that, you know. I actually recognize that name as a performer. Now, okay, so as the officiant here, I'm going to say we've got three really bad answers. And if we <laughs> universally agree, we can just call it a tie. Okay, yeah. bye. Wow. In the hi- first time in the history of mixtape the game dot and the tie goes to the guest. Congratulations! We have a draw. And by the way, because you mentioned soccer, and I know Watson likes soccer, will permit a draw. <laughs> oh my God! We come on par with soccer scoring rules. All right, that's it, guys. I quit. I'm out. Zeke, congratulations! You are the new host of Startup Hustle. <laughs> um, you can call mom now. You can call mom. So, I mean, I'm going to go call my mom right now. Mama yeah, made let's it. Get, well, let's just bring her on the show. Let's patch her in. Hang, how do we yeah. do that, Matt? Uh, <laughs> Matt Matt clicks the link that I send him, and then we talk into microphones. <laughs> right? Is that, it's fair, right? <laughs> so, um, All right. So we end our episodes of Start Apostle with what we call the Founders Freestyle. I'm going to take a pivot on that today, and I want to call it the Leaders Freestyle. Um, since you're focused on leadership and being fired up, I consider m- myself a leader for, in I don't know, I try to be a leader wherever I go. I know Matt feels the same way. He's got a lot of experience. Zick, I'm going to let you go first. What's a quick tidbit of leadership advice that you can give us? Yes, um, I try to I try to simplify things and make it easier. Um, I would go with uh, I think it's uh, John. I don't know if it's called if if he calls it the, the five the five rule the, the five minute rule or something. But basically, he says that if you have a tree in your lawn, like a huge tree in your lawn, and you wake up every day and you give just five slices, if you want you want to cut the tree down, and every day you give five slices of that tree every day, just five. Don't don't go more than five. And he says. Give that tree maybe a month to two months. Eventually, five five flashes a day will bring that tree down. And I think that has uh, is a process of leadership, is a process of success. Every single day, consistency. Every single day, doing um, not too much, but as much as you can handle. But being consistent. Um, not trying something one day and the next day you're like, you know what, I'm not going to do that again. But being consistent because even though you might think no one is watching but someone is watching always being at your best no matter where you are. And um, yeah, I would say that's just, that's just it for me being able to be consistent and do your best no matter, you know, where you are and what you do. So that's, that's it for me. What do you got, Matt? So Zeke, you mentioned earlier about, you know, your goals to change education and get people fired up and all this stuff. Right. And I feel like the number one thing that people need in their life is a mentor. You know, Mm -hmm. and for some of us, that could be a a mother, a father, a grandparent, an uncle, or it could be somebody in the community, right? And I I think that's, I don't know if that's what a lot of people in this world are missing. And, you know, obviously, if, you know, your parents were not very successful in life, they're not necessarily going to help mentor you to be way more successful than them, right? You know, Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's what everybody needs is a mentor. and, And, you know, you know, even your father, whoever, right, can be a good mentor about things like work ethic and self-responsibility and all those sort of things. But I think um, that's what I think that's what we all need, right? Is we need mentors, and we need different mentors at different stages in our life, right? When, you know, once you become a little more successful, you're going to have to find a mentor that can help drive you to the next level, right? And I think that's what a lot of us need, and and maybe that's what a, a lot of people are missing these days—just mentors. Mm. 
I like can that, I, can I add on that a little bit before. Just yeah, go ahead. Add a little, yeah, so um, speaking of mentorship, I am. I don't know if you guys know about. Um, I don't know if you guys know Cody. Um, uh, Sandler Training because I'm interning with Sandler Training, and basically that's what the what they do. It's all about mentorship and leadership. So I'm gonna give a quick shout out to the company I'm interning with. Quick shout out to them. And yeah, so mentorship is big. So Sandler Training is pretty good, at, like you know, mentorship and leadership. So once again with us today, Zeke Ganga, the host of the fired up pot fired up kc podcast yes put a, link, put a link in the show notes for you so check it out uh and before i before i end this episode once again today's episode of start a puzzle brought to you by fullscale.io call us we'll help you be successful there you go i almost want to end on that um i think when it comes to 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 I think how I'd like to end this episode is in regards to leadership, you have to take extreme ownership for the success of whatever it is that you're leading. Um, I have really embraced this over the last year quite, quite a bit. And, and oftentimes I see leaders blaming the people they're leading for the lack of success. There aren't bad teams. There's only bad leaders. That's mm-hmm. what it, that's what extreme ownership is. So if you're a leader and you're hearing yourself blame the people on your team for their lack of success or the team's lack of success, eventually, now look, there may be instances where that occurs, but those are just instances. All of that travels back upstream to you. So at some point, and I've said that a, a lot over the last several years before truly understanding and embracing extreme ownership is like, at some point, if things are failing, we have to look at ourselves. If we're the leaders, like regardless of what that is, it comes, it does shine back at you. And you know, you got, you got to understand that you got to embrace it. And then one last thing is I think that leadership occurs. It's not appointed. So you'll often see people like, especially in school and stuff like that. Here's a group of six. Okay. You're the leader. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't mean you're a good leader. That doesn't mean you don't, you know, like some of that is, is it's, you can still step up and, and move a group towards success. I, I really believe that often leadership occurs organically. Sometimes with full scale and our clients, they'll want to have a, they'll, a new client will want to start with four or five team members and they'll say, who's the team lead? And I suggest to them, I said, you might want to get these people together and see how that happens organically. And appointing someone as a leader doesn't necessarily put them in a leadership position. So I mean, that's all I got. I know that, I know that, uh, I know we covered a lot of stuff here today. I mean, really, it's just like you said, if there's something that you want and there's something you feel uh, passionate about becoming successful or a master at, or there's a place you want to get in life, you just got to start clawing your way towards that destination. Anyway, guys, I'm all fired up. I got to get out of here. I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time. See ya. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you guys for having me so much. I appreciate it.